Hi folks, we're looking at the topic of cross-site request forgery, which is a common and critical kind of web vulnerability. And in this first video, I'm going to tell you what it is and how it works. So cross-site request forgery, or CSRF, which it can be pronounced CSRF, has been known by other names over the years, um, such as XSRF, session writing, hostile linking, or uh, Microsoft occasionally refer to it as a one-click attack. And essentially what it involves is an attacker tricking a victim's web browser into sending a request that to the server looks like the user has initiated some action. And the user is not aware that this is usually any idea that this um, action has been initiated. They certainly don't intend for it to happen. Uh, and it allows an attacker to basically make some change um, on some server um, by making the user send a request to that server. So the reason that this works is because of the way that session management works. If you recall from um, you know when we looked at those topics, when you are on a website, your web browser will automatically send along all of your cookies every time any request is sent to that website. So if you are have a tab open and in that tab you've logged into Facebook for example, then every th every request that your web browser sends to Facebook, no matter where it initiates or how it initiates, will send along all the cookie information to Facebook, which will convince Facebook that you're the one sending the request. And if Facebook aren't careful, they could um, basically, an, an attacker can initiate any kind of action um, that will basically send the request, Facebook will receive a request, I'm um, trying to delete uh, or create a post or delete a post or upload an image or whatever. Same for your bank account will be, you know, the, 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 the bank server receives a request that says the user wants to transfer some money. And if you look at all the session information, then it will say, yes, this person is who they say they are because the web browser will send along um, the cookies. And so, you know, it's a really serious problem if a, an attacker can basically get a user to initiating all, all of these actions on these third party servers, then the attacker can basically achieve whatever they want through this cross site request forgery attack. So the kinds of um, HTTP requests that attackers will be interested in are ones that initiate a change, so a state changing request, um, so ones that have side effects. So it's something like if, the, if you can send a request and that transfers money between bank accounts, obviously that's something an attacker will want to um, attack. And if there were no extra protections involved, which I'll record a separate video again about how you defend against these things, um, you know, if there's not something specifically in place to stop this, then it would be trivial to basically um, send money. Uh, basically, th this kind of vulnerability can mean that an attacker can um, force a victim's web br browser into, you know, initiating all these responses. Um, all these different actions. The attack is blind in that the, it doesn't leak any information directly back to the attacker because the attacker is doing something, um, and I'll talk about the different ways that an attacker can um, can do this in a second, but the attacker is initiating an action within the victim's web browser, which then sends the request to the server and the server responds back to the web browser. So the, the interaction is from the victim browser directly to the victim server. Um, and the attacker has just done something that initiates that to start. Um, you know, obviously if you're transferring some money into their bank account, they'll see the end result of that is that they've now got some money or they might manage to trick a web server into changing a password or something like that, for example. Um, but they don't actually see the actual response and request um, happening. So unless there was a cross-site scripting vulnerability, in which case all of it falls apart and all the defenses for cross-site request forgery actually depend on there not being any cross-site um, um, scripting vulnerabilities in place. If you've got cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, then you've got uh, more serious issues. Um, 
So all of this relies on the fact that otherwise you don't have a cross-site scripting vulnerability, but you could still have a cross-site request forgery vulnerability, uh, you know, potentially. And one way to um, trick a is to trick a user to basically involve some user interaction. So you know, obviously, every time you click a link, um, that is sending a GET request to a server. So every time that you are clicking a link on anything, whether that's via an email or just from another website or an instant message, then you know, obviously, that link opens up in a web browser, which sends the request to the server, and again. It will send along your cookies, and that can be enough to initiate the attack. Um, you can also um, trick a web browser by hosting a website. So if you host a website that's completely separate to the victim website, but just any website that they you then get them to visit, inside that website, you could have some JavaScript which um, generates requests. So, um, or, um, or just image tags or iframes or other HTML elements that, that load via an HTTP request. So an image tag is a classic example where you could just set the source to whatever request you want their web browser to make. And then as soon as they visit the website, it tries to load all the images and it makes all these requests. Um, JavaScript can also make requests um, either by initiating like the a hidden form and um, like sending information that way, or via AJAX, like a um, XML HTTP requests. Um, and the worst case scenario is when you've got a stored cross-site request forgery flow on a website, which allows you to actually place the attack um, on the vulnerable website itself. So if you if there was a forum that allowed you to, you know, that had um, that that allowed you to basically insert an image that loaded a uh, request, um, then you could potentially, every time anyone visited that website or that forum post, they would be attacked on the website that they're visiting. So, you know, if you can place the attack on the vulnerable website, then you're going to potentially get a lot more people that are logged in on that website to visit the um, to visit that attack and therefore um, have more successful attacks. So here's an example. If you had a GET request, um, so again, a GET request is any like um, request that you could type into the URL bar of a web browser. Uh, and there's an example, a hypothetical example of a bank uh, that has a trend that has a um, transaction where you can basically specify um, as parameters the action is to transfer money to this account with a certain amount of money. Now, if that was how the website worked, then just by clicking a link that um, had this request in it would send money to the victim um, potentially. Oh, sorry, to the to the um, attacker if this was their bank account, for example. Um, instead of getting them to click a link, you could basically just embed this image um, tag into a website. It doesn't have to be the same website because you can load images. Um, like across domains is not an issue. So you could basically put this bit of code in any website at all as the attacker and get the victim to visit your website somehow. Um, and that would send that same request to the server. And again, if this was how um, the transactions worked in on this website, then it would be incredibly likely to be vulnerable to cross-site request forgery attacks uh, and you know you, the money would be transferred immediately. Now, officially, get requests shouldn't make any state changes. So this kind of thing you should never see on a website. Like officially, you shouldn't see um, an action that makes any changes be on a clickable link. Um, and but unfortunately, that's not the case. Lots of websites do you still use get requests to initiate actions. Um, but, you know, it shouldn't be the case, uh, but it is often the case. A post request was once thought to be safe from cross-site request forgery. Um, and so the post request is sent a little bit differently instead of the URL containing the parameters, the parameters are like sent along 
as a query string. Uh, and a post request isn't sent by visiting, clicking on a link, or typing it into an address bar. A post request happens um, basically by submitting a form or some JavaScript, like Ajax will initiate it. Um, so unlike with get requests, it's n an attacking um, is not just a matter of sending a link. And um, you know, as I said, once it was thought that you, it was safe against cross-site request forgery, but uh, it's not. There's, there are actually loads of ways of triggering post requests. Um, so you can have the victim submit a um, HTML form, um, and that will, you know, can send a post request to a server, uh, or you can do it from some JavaScript, um, either by triggering a form submit or through some um, XML HTTP request, um, which is yeah some AJAX. So you can embed that in a in a website, host that you know wherever you want, and get them to visit that website. You can send them a link to that, for example, and then that website's um, you know will trigger that um, post request that gets sent along. Um, HTTP HTTP has other methods like put and delete, um, and um, but the um, SOP will provide protection. So there'll be protection against, um, so web, brow web browsers themselves will prevent other kinds of HTTP methods happening across different domains. So if, if you're visiting one domain uh, and that, um, it won't let you embed or some JavaScript to send a delete command from one website to another website. Um, so, uh, but, but to be honest, it's quite rare that you'll find put and delete. Almost all websites are actually designed around post and get requests. So finally, I just want to point out that cross-site request forgery is an example of a confused deputy problem. Um, and one of the reasons why uh, cross-site request forgery is a problem is because of the ambient authority, ambient authority that your web browser has and the ability to uh, uh, like it will automatically assume that you are the one that wants to initiate all of the um, interactions. And I'm going to record a separate um, short video describing those two concepts. And following that, I'll um, record uh, separate videos on um, how to prevent these attacks and uh, maybe a demo and some examples and things.